our Father in heaven. Your Father and my Father, if we are believers. Not to babble, not to go on carrying on. And I, I think that probably the way we pray and the box of names that we pray for uh, is not babbling. God's going to answer these prayers. If we're praying from the heart, God's going to answer those prayers. Well, the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Be persistent in your prayers. Know what you're praying for. The first thing that we see here as we pray as our Father in heaven, we want to keep your name holy. Keep your name holy. The second thing we see that to his kingdom, when we pray, we pray for his kingdom to come soon. I like that word soon on the end of that. I'm not sure what the other translations put in there, but the New Living Translation puts the word soon there. May your kingdom come soon. Probably there's a lot of people been wishing that for a lot of time here lately in these days. And especially with all the tragedies that are taking place. And we don't know whether to drive down the street or the highway. Uh, whether to walk into a grocery store or a shop. Or what to do. Whether that may be our last. Whether someone's just going to break loose and start shooting. The third thing that I see in this scripture is. That when we pray, not what I want, but His will be done. His will be done. We need to always realize that it's, it's God's doing. What God wants. His will be done, not mine. The fourth thing is to give us food that we need. We need food daily, don't we? Not only do we need fat, earthly food, because uh, you see man can't live by bread alone, but we need that spiritual food also. So we need to be praying that God will give us the food we need. There's nothing more inspiring when we realize that God has answered a prayer and we see someone make a decision to become a Christian and to follow him. When we go out and we witness to someone about accepting Jesus as Savior, and they make that decision to follow him. There's nothing greater than that. Then to see them go joyously out to tell others that they have found Christ as Savior. Oh, uh, there's one other thing here in this prayer, this model prayer that Jesus said, pray like this, and that is forgive us our sins and that's what he says in verse 12 and forgive us our sins there shouldn't be a day go by that we shouldn't ask God to forgive us our sins so we can forgive others That's not what it says. It's, it says, and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. Last but not least, he says, don't let us be tempted. Don't let us be tempted.
we're tempted every day. Sometimes more than once. Pray that God helps us. When you pray, pray that God helps us to pass the test. And save us from the evil one. We're going to close the service this morning in prayer rather than the invitation hymn. Sort of like we did last Sunday. Because there is such a need for pray. And when we pray, to know what we're asking God for. And so last Sunday I mentioned that we're going to have an altar call. And we're going to do the altar call a little bit different this morning. I'm going to ask that everybody as we stand and and come to this moment of closing prayer. And we're going to be praying for all of those young boys and girls in that high school where 17 were killed and 14 more were wounded badly. And I, I thought it was great that all of those students now, a lot of them went to Washington to talk to the president about gun control. Uh, making a change. We don't know when this tragedy like this might happen. But it seems like it's happening quite a bit. And I'm not sure that the answer is gun control. I am sure the answer is prayer by you and I to make a difference. And this morning our prayer is going to be that as well as for our homecoming service. So I'm going to ask that we stand together and we move to the center aisle and we join hands all the way around that aisle as we close in prayer. I'm glad that you're here this morning. I feel the need to pray. To pray for these things that I mentioned. Right on up and join hands because this makes it a circle of prayer warriors. And just look around and see. This is great. This is great. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for being our God, being our Heavenly Father. And Lord, we want to lift you up before everyone that we see and know. We want to lift you up here in this place this morning, Lord, and let each of us see and realize we believe in the same God. And we believe, Lord, that you're going to take care of all of the needs of each one here in this circle. We're going to believe, Lord, that you're going to take care of this church and that it will grow as you would have it to grow. That it will be a blessing unto you. Lord, we pray for our homecoming service. We pray that you will open hearts and eyes and people will come and respond and come to have the fellowship once again and to enjoy what's being done here that we might give you the praise. And Lord, we pray for these uh, boys and girls, students at this college, a uh, high school in Florida. We pray for the families of those students. Lord, we pray that as they continue this quest, that you'll guide and direct them, and they will realize that it's all because of you. That they have the courage to stand up and take a stand 
and may they give you the praise. Lord, we pray for the families of the lost loved ones through that situation. And there are others, Lord, all around that we have witnessed, and we pray for those. Lord, just help us to do our part by praying and praying and praying. May we not give up until there is a change. Now, Lord, your blessings upon each one here in this circle. Can you guide and direct us as we go our way? Give us a safe journey. The Lord will give you the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Oh,